Hello everyone and welcome to Beatles News Briefs, your home for the latest real clear Beatles news and information. I'm your host Steve Marinucci and this is Dateline January 16th, 2019. Later in today's show, the author of Beatleness and our Beatle News Briefs contributing editor Candy Leonard and I will discuss a question that occurred to me that I'd like to hear your reaction on. I'm not going to tell you exactly what the question is. You'll have to listen further into the show and find out. But first, a couple of quick news items in the latest chart news. Paul McCartney announced a new freshen up date today. It's June 29th at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. The pre-sale begins January 16th at 10 a.m. through his website. The password for the pre-sale is Paul Freshen Up Las Vegas. Public sale begins January 22nd at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. And there's been no official word as of this moment, but T- Ticketmaster is showing a new Ringo All-Star Band show August 28th at the Paramount Theater in Oakland, California. According to Ticketmaster, the tickets go on sale January 18th at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Pre-sale starts at 10 a.m. Pacific Time, January 17th, also through Ticketmaster. An official announcement from Ringo of added dates in the U.S. is coming soon, we were told, by his rep. In video news, the 1993 film Backbeat is being released on Blu-ray by Shout Factory on February 19th. You can find an ordering link on our Beatles News and Information page on Facebook, and also our That's What I Want Beatles Store page also on Facebook. We'd appreciate it if you'd use those links. Finally, federal employees impacted by the government shutdown can receive a free pair, free pair of tickets to a show called Beatles vs. Stones, a musical showdown, which is playing at the Rococo Theater in Nebraska on Wednesday, as reported by the Lincoln Journal Star. The offer is based on ticket availability, and tickets may only be obtained at the box office on the day of the show. Federal employees must show a valid government ID to get the tickets. Chris Legrand, who plays Mick Jagger, said in the release accompanying the complimentary ticket offer, federal employees are struggling without paychecks and coming to a concert might take their minds off of it for an evening. And now some chart positions from the Billboard issue of January 19th. On the Billboard 200 at number 17 down from 81 is the White Album. 135 down from 128 is Beatles 1, and at 138 down from 126 is Abbey Road. Uh, On the Artist 100, the Beatles are number 42 down from number 41. Top Album Sales, number 30 down from 24 is The White Album, 67 up from 68 is Abbey Road, 88 down from 58 is Egypt Station, 93 up from 98 is Beatles 1, and 97 down from 86 is Sgt. Pepper. Uh, The catalog albums, uh, 29 down from 11 is the White Album, number 40 down from 32 is Beatles 1, and 41 down from 30 is Abbey Road. Top rock albums, number 19 down from 12 is the White Album, number 22 Uh, Staying the same is The Beatles 1, and number 24 down from 21 is Abbey Road. On the vinyl chart, all good news. All three albums, uh, Beatle albums showing on the chart are up. Uh, up 5 up from 9 is Abbey Road, 12 up from 14 is The White Album, and 16 up from 20 is Sgt. Pepper. And now, sitting on a little discussion between myself and contributing editor Candy Leonard, uh, after that, I'll be back with This Day in History. Okay, I'm with Candy Leonard, uh, author of Beatleness and the contributing editor to Beatle News Briefs. Hey, Candy. Hey, Steve. How you doing? Okay. And we're here to do a little talking about the Beatles. And I have a a question, and and this just hit me today. And I, I don't know what the inspiration of it was, but I thought I'd run it past you. And I also hopefully will hear from some of the listeners as to what they think about this question. It's a crazy question, but here goes. There are several shows out there. Um, there's one in, in Las Vegas. 
Um, and uh, there's, uh, in fact, I think there's two of the two of these in, in Las Vegas for Elvis and Michael Jackson. And there's the Roy Orbison show that's touring where they use holograms to, you know, kind of bring them back alive. Right. I think that was also done with Prince, I believe. Too. Have they? Are they? They started doing it with Prince too. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. But the but my question is, if somebody put together a John Lennon or a George Harrison show, would you go? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess would I go is sort of a slightly different question than what do I think about it. Well, all right, um, let's let's start with the what do you what, what do you think about it? What do you think about it? Well, it's interesting. I mean, you. I mean, why stop at a solo George or a solo John? You could theoretically have a. Uh, you could reunite them. Well, that was one of the. That was the reason why I said John Lennon or George Harrison, rather than doing a Beatles reunion, because number one, the chances of that happening would be, I think, very slim, because the Beatles wouldn't allow it. The, the ring, I can't see the Beatles doing anything like that now. Maybe, you know, maybe once all four of them are gone, maybe they'd do it. Right. Somebody, somebody would do it. But I do not think that would happen now. Absolutely not. Well, the same permissions that would be required for doing a holographic or virtual reunion, I don't know what we'd call it, um, you'd still, even for just a solo John holographic performance or solo George, you'd still need permissions. Well, you'd need permissions from the estate, the, the right. individual estates. But that would be different than getting permissions from four states or four, four entities. Because Who do you what... think would be the biggest holdout? Now? Yeah. Oh, I think Paul. I think pa Paul probably. I you think. think? Paul, yeah. Yeah. Why do. do you think that? But I, I don't think I, I don't. But I don't think either of them. I don't think Ringo would do it either, because uh, I don't think he, it, he doesn't want. I don't think. Well, they've they've basically said since John died that the Beatles can't get back together, and they have you know this whole th thing about reunions. Every time the two of them get together whether it be on record or on stage, you get all these headlines, you know, these clickbait headlines that say Beatles reunion, Beatles right, reunion. Right, right. Where it isn't. It really isn't. No, it isn't. And, and but it, this I, is what you're talking about is kind of a whole other thing. I mean, there is some right. universe where I could imagine just, you know, because they're into the technology and the gee whiz factor, I could almost imagine them kind of maybe possibly wanting to play around with that i don't know i mean but getting back to your original question would i go I, probably not do i think it's a bad thing no i mean i, I figure you know if people would if 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 the permission is granted to do this and and they and you know fans want to go why not i mean you know, I, I guess the counter argument is that somehow it's disrespectful or or undignified or whatever. But I mean, it's it's harmless, I guess. See, my feeling is completely opposite. I think really this is a dreadful idea. Absolutely, I would not. I would not go to it for, you know. Yeah, I mean, if I was asked to review it, I suppose I would go. <laughs> but I would not pay to see this. I would not pay to see. I wouldn't. I, I mean, I really cringed when I saw that Roy Orbison. You know, they were putting out Roy Orbison shows. Mm -hmm. uh, that really bothered me. Elvis didn't surprise me because Elvis has always been a money-making entity. They right, always like the Beatles. <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose. I mean, it, it, the uh, given the fact that uh, you know, until Love came into the picture, the Beatles didn't really have a a Las Vegas type situation right they didn't have um, yeah. yeah i mean they there there are when you go to vegas when i the last one of the times i remember that i was in vegas um one of the beatle tribute bands was playing there and i'm sure there's always a beatles tribute band found around vegas or that may have been there before love you know fine um i mean that kind of thing you can't stop and vegas is the type of you know environment where you'll see 
all sorts of crazy things like that. Um, right. I mean, you know, the Liberace Museum was there, and Liberace was there, God knows forever. I mean, he is the he is the Vegas act you know i mean really right. for- well the beatles have the you know they sort of have this weird weird situation which i mean you could say they're a vegas act without having to go through the indignity of being a vegas act right well yeah and i suppose if you really wanted to dis love you could say that i mean i've never been the a huge huge fan of 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 love i have to i have to admit that i've seen well, it well i have to admit that i haven't seen it okay so i mean I'm i i have to, what i have i've seen it twice oh yeah and and i just kind of well i mean there are parts of it that are that are kind of interesting the end part with with george singing while my guitar gently weeps is is absolutely gorgeous um you know, and some of the acro- acrobatics are interesting, although they have changed the show since it began. I mean, it changed. Yeah, it, I heard it a few years it, ago it that they changed it, and people seem to say that it was like a great. Not that it, they didn't like it before, but that it was much better. I almost went a couple of times, but it, it didn't work out. But you know, I don't think we're the audience for that necessarily. Well, um, I, maybe we are. I don't know. Well, I mean, I don't want to get into a whole big discussion of the love show now but the sound system is really it, it i mean it's a it's in a kind of an auditorium and you've got he- headphones around practically around your head um so you've got that kind of a, a, you've got a surround sound system mm-hmm. and, and everything like that and you know the whole thing the, it's it's like almost being seeing a planetarium show kind of you know it's that kind of envelopment type of thing but that's not real i mean the whole issue of seeing somebody dead on stage in a hologram i can't see that i mean another person i'm surprised they haven't done that with is jim morrison uh to my knowledge they have not done they haven't done that and the doors would be another group that would be very um would be be very receptive, I would think. Or Bowie. Doing... Or Bowie. Yeah, I'm surprised. We may very well see a Bowie show. Um, I, I, mean, I don't I know. Think... I I haven't heard. I haven't heard of one yet. But I, I we mean, may well, very... you, you know, think, talking about the love show, I think it's not unrelated in that both. You know, if you think about a holographic beetle or solo beetle, perform. You know, thing and love. I mean, they're similar in that they're both kind of. Um, you know, they're new versions of this thing that was, and they're already kind of, you know, illusion, you know, they're mm-hmm. already, like, it, it's taken already into such a different context that... Well, you, you do have, you, I mean, there are pictures during the love show, so it's not like you don't see anything. Right. I, well, I can't, I can't remember, I can't I remember... Say, off- that, what you're saying about the wraparound experience, I mean, you could also have Beatles... A, Beatles performance in virtual reality, mm-hmm. which I, I'm surprised. I mean, I, I predict that's probably going to happen. You know, they, they, they've. I mean, love. I guess comes close to that. I can't remember because it's been a couple of years now. Um, whether they actually do a, a virtual thing or not, but I know there are images at some point projected in the center where you look and you see you know, George and, and, and John and stuff. So there are, there is that, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I don't remember, I can't remember offhand if it's 3d, I haven't seen it, you know, I've only seen it a couple of times, but I mean, the issue of, 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 we're talking now about John and George. Right. And whether or not a John and George show, you know, whether you would, uh, whether you would be for that or against it, I would be completely against it, period. And your reason, in a nutshell, is um, because I think it's I think it's just a very bad. You think it's creepy? Sort of, yeah, I think it's I think it is. I think it's a a very bad tribute. I, I don't think it's a you know. I think it's just a money grabbing tribute. Well, I yes, it is. I agree with you. It is creepy and it is sort of money grabbing. But at the same time, I also think. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what 
I mean, of course, it's it's absurd to think, well, would they want that? What would they think about it? And I don't know about George so much, but I think if John, like, looked down and saw that that was happening, I think he'd probably get sort of a kick out of it. I mean, they were all, you know, always into technology and new technologies and things. I don't know. I mean, I agree with you. It's kind of creepy and a money grab. But at the same time, just, I mean, I think fans would love it. Most fans. I mean, mm-hmm. some might find it just too creepy i i have to admit that i could not have predicted love i i I was genuinely there you go right i I was genuinely surprised when when this whole when the whole love thing came up because and remember who was the one that initiated it george because he was the one that saw the show saw the cirque du soleil first and recommended it so yeah really the whole love show was george's concept no, but his he it was his inspiration because okay. he was the one he was the first one to he was the one that saw the Cirque du Soleil show and he was the one who came up with the idea. I mean he didn't develop the whole show. That was obviously done by others too. But it was his he was the one that kind of got the wheel going on that thing. Mm-hmm. So you know, I would never have been able to, I would never have predicted that. Now, whether or not, whether or not the Harrison estate will do something like that on George, you know, I don't know. It's well, an, do you think, Yoko, what do you think Yoko would think about it? See, that's an, that's an, that's an interesting question too, because we're talking about two different people here, talking about the Harrison estate and the Lennon estate. Um, I don't know. I honestly I don't, don't know. I, I somehow think they'd get a kick out of it. I think, you know, like people like us who grew up with them, I think we maybe see these things differently. And, you know, maybe we need to zoom out and see how a broader population, a younger demographic sees them. And so our sense of, and I agree with you, oh, it's creepy, it's undignified, it's disrespectful. I mean, all that, you know, you could certainly make the case for, for that Mm -hmm. but other people other people who have a different perspective on them than we have might think it's it's the greatest thing in the world because it gives them an opportunity to um you know experience them in a way that they couldn't have before and that's an excellent point because i think you're right i think younger people would go for it more I i i i do but that doesn't mean that i have to like it and i don't (laughs) <laughs> no, you don't. I mean, you know, I'm just thinking about which maybe we'll talk about in a future um, show about, you know, Crate and Barrel offering these, you know, this line of Beatles home decor, these prints, right. which get pretty pricey, you know, and in in a way, it's, the, you know, like, it's very, uh, you could say, well, it's co-opted, it's a money grab, it, it, it's it's contextualizing them in a way, you know, in this kind of, you know, it, it, it sort of somehow doesn't seem to be consistent with who they were, or whatever. But that's, I think that would be our perception. I think other, again, younger fans, you know, who, you know, millennials who have $600 to spend on a Beatles print, you know, I mean, they wouldn't see anything wrong with that. I, I, I again, I, I'm not going to argue with you on that one, because I agree with you. There, you know, for every, for every person that doesn't like something, you know, we have the somebody else that does. So, you know, what can you say? Right, and the bottom line here is that all of these things, and I'm sure there's going to, they're going to show up in incarnations that we can't even foresee now so i mean who could have imagined beat bugs for example the kid the netflix show which is adorable my grandson um loves it um, I, have, know, so I, have not, things, I have not seen that yet i, ha- I have to it, it's very nice to, it's, to it's it. very nicely done um so and we couldn't have envisioned things you know these other contexts these other yeah. uses of their mute you know whatever um, so who knows what we're going to see over the, the next decades. But the bottom line is that it's keeping them out there in the ether, you know? Oh, absolutely. And, and there's no there's no telling what the techno- how the changing te- te- technology will be used to bring the Beatles 
to future audiences. There's no way that we can that we can predict that. But, yeah, I mean, we might have you know yellow submarine figures, you know, in the uh, Macy's Thanksgiving parade. You know, who knows? I still, you know, that whole thing about the the 3D yellow submarine. I, it, I, I'm kind of wishing that they had not um, completely given up on that. That's too bad. I think it would have been interesting. I think the horror of that was the unknown. I don't think, I think because nobody knew what, what they were going to do. And they were also looking at the fact that they were pro they didn't know, you know, how the Beatles themselves, the, the actual Beatles were going to be in it. I think there was, I think that was the problem there, but you know, who knows? It may, they may, you know, God knows they may come up with that idea down the road sometime and then decide to go for it. Well, I mean, Yellow Submarine is a really important product for them because it really oh, yeah. is the gateway for the ne- you know, for for the youngest generation, whatever at a, at whatever moment that is, you know. And right. so, you know, I mean, I, and Beat Bugs also. I mean, when I was visiting um, my daughter and her family in Brooklyn, and my um, grandson was watching beat bugs and then we went out for a walk and he's like scooting down on his little scooter the streets of Brooklyn singing Beatles songs. <laughs> are they using, see, this is how much I've, I've, I'm, are they using actual Beatles songs or are they using remakes? They're remakes. Okay. See, I have, um, I, 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 I have Netflix. I should. I should watch it. You but. should check out a few episodes. It's it's really cute. It's like these little characters, and it it's it. I mean, it, it's that kind of modern a- animation that many of us don't like, but it's a good version of the you know more kind of modern animation. And it opens the, this opening theme song, and the closing song is "All You Need Is Love." It's it's very sweet. It's nice. It's kind of a, it's really an homage to them. It's it's very well done. I thought. And what's funny is that they. They won't, um, they won't license the they'll license the images, but not the actual original Beatle cartoons. Interesting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, well, I want you know they must have a plan. I mean, not a plan, but I mean, they, I'm sure they give a lot of thought to what they will and will not do. So another oh, recent sure. example, which again we may talk about in the future, is the the adult what they're calling an adult coloring book based on Lennon McCartney lyrics with that Crayola put out, um, you know, which is, you know, like any company, whether it's Crayola or Crate and Barrel that gets that, you know, that goodie. <laughs> I mean, that's huge. Right. Right. Anyway, thank you very much, Candy. That, that, was, right. uh, was, fun. that was, that was fun. That was fun. And we should ask people to comment. Would would they go see a holographic George or John, or even a completely synthetic holographic reunion? Yeah. No, I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. If uh, we'd love to hear from you, um, you can write to us at Beatlesnewsdesk at gmail dot com, or they can put it on the Facebook. On, Facebook. Uh, on the Beatles News and Information page on Facebook. So thank you again. All Beatles, right. Thank you. Beatles, Take care. Illness author Candy Leonard, and we will do this again. On this day uh, in history in uh, 1957, January 16th, 1957, the Cavern Club in Liverpool opened as a jazz club and later became a venue for rising rock bands such as one called The Beatles. January 16th, 1964, the Beatles played the first of two shows, of, of ter- first two of 18 shows at the Paris Olympia. January 16th, 1970, this was a busy day uh, in, in Beatles history. Scotland Yard confiscated John and Yoko's lithographs from the Bag One Gallery in London because they were obscene, quote, quote. January 16th, 1980, another big legal moment in Beatles history. Paul McCartney was busted for marijuana in Japan. Uh, January 16th, 1988, George Harrison hit number one on the U.S. singles chart with Got My Mind Set on You. January 17th, 1967, the Daily Mail ran a story about 4,000 holes 
in the road in Lancashire, and you know that that inspired some lines in A Day in the Life. And on January 18, 1964, the Beatles' I Want to Hold Your Hand debuted on the U.S. charts at number 45. Born on this day on January 18, 1944, was Legs Larry Smith, a member of the Bonzo Dog Band, who also performed in Magical Mystery Tour. Uh, Legs Larry Smith designed the cover for George Harrison's Gone Trobo album, and he is mentioned by name in the Bonzo song, the intro and the outro, and when I saw Elton John in concert in the early 70s, and I can't remember exactly what year it was, I think it was 72 or 73, Legs Larry Smith was part of the show. So, anyway... Um, that's it for now. You can catch our shows on fab4radio.com. Thanks, Matt. Beatlesarama.com. Thank you, Pat. And also on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our Beatles News and Information group on Facebook for the latest in Beatles in the Beatles world. And check out our That's What I Want Beatles store page on Facebook for gift ideas for yourself or for your p- favorite people. And please look for our next show and subs- and we hope you will subscribe thanks again to Candy Leonard author of Beatleness a great book that you should have if you don't already uh, and also our contributing uh, editor on Beatles News Briefs till next time this is Steve Marinucci saying be seeing you that one market fab